Good morning. We're glad you joined us this morning in Inglewood Church of Christ. Let's begin the service with a word of prayer. Would you pray with me, please? Oh, Heavenly Father, you who are gracious, you who are kind, you who are just, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us, Lord. You've provided the plan of salvation. You've provided it so all we need to do is follow your commandments, Lord. They're not difficult. They're not onerous. Lord, we just are so grateful for all you've done for us. We thank you for this chance to worship you, Lord, to come to you in prayer. You are the creator, and still you listen to your creation, and we thank you so much for this opportunity. Lord, we are a sinful people, and we ask for your forgiveness, Lord. We ask that you please forgive us for those things that we've done wrong. Help us to find that window of escape when temptation faces us, Lord. Help us to realize that sin does matter, Lord, and that we should avoid it at all costs. And when we do, Lord, we thank you so much for your forgiveness if we repent. We thank you so much for that, Lord. Lord, we have special requests to bring to you. We want to pray for Pauline, who's been sick, and others who are facing this illness, Lord, the COVID illness. We ask you, please, to be with them, heal them up. Lord, we thank you for the people that have been reemployed, Lord. There's been several that have been out of work, and we thank you for allowing them to have employment again. For those who are still searching, Lord, we ask you to grant them faith and patience. Most of all, Lord, we pray that your will be done. Lord, you do know what's best for us, even though we don't always realize what that is, and we sometimes doubted and our faith may not be as strong as it needs to be lord we ask you please to give us that faith help us to realize that you do know what's best for us lord we offer lord a, a special request for jose's family as they're going through his funeral lord it's just a difficult time for the congregation we ask you please to to bless that family comfort that family lord Again, we thank you for all that you've done for this. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll now partake in the communion. Good morning. Let's take a few moments to remember our Savior and remember the sacrifice he did for us. When asked the question, are you free? Most people, especially Americans, would say, indeed I am. So what is freedom? The dictionary says, liberty to move or act without influence. So what does it mean to have freedom in Christ? Well, let's go to the Word and see what he says. In the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 8, starting with verse 31. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and we have never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we will be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, anyone who has sinned is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you are free indeed. So you see the sacrifice that Jesus made for us sets us free. We were in bondage. To sin. We're all sinners. And if you think you're not, 
you're deceiving yourself. But Jesus paid the price for that sin. And it was a heavy price. So as we partake in this bread, let us remember. Let us remember Jesus Christ. Let us remember the beatings he took, the nails that were driven through his hands and his feet, the suffering he did for us. Let us pray. Father, we come before your throne and we are recognizing our Savior, recognizing what he did, remembering the suffering that he had to endure for the sins that we commit. So as we partake in this unleavened bread, let us remember, let's remember our Savior. Let us remember the suffering. Let us remember how much it means to us. Amen. Jesus spilled his blood. The life is in the blood. Without that blood being spilled, we wouldn't have that forgiveness. But we do. He did spill his blood. And so as we partake in this fruit of the vine that represents that blood, let us remember. Let us remember Jesus. Let us remember him spilling his blood on that cross for our sins. Let us pray. Father, again we come before your throne, and again we're thankful. We're remembering Jesus and the blood that was spilled. We are sad that he had to spill his blood. We are grateful that he did. So as we partake in this fruit of the vine, let's remember that blood. Remember what it means to us. It's in Jesus' holy and righteous name that we pray. Amen. will now be led in the scripture and the sermon. Good morning. This morning's scripture reading comes out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Matthew 6. 25 to 34, which reads, For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you, that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself." Each day has enough trouble of its own. Preach the word. Good morning. This is it. We're doing yet another online service for you. We're getting to meet together in our homes and and just be able to enjoy God's word via technology. Now, We've been joking around this morning about how uh, every, every Sunday morning during announcements, 
someone says, please silence your electronics, don't do that. Keep them up. Let's, let's, uh, let's keep listening and, and enjoy our time in God's Word. Now, this morning, I want to ask you a question, and I want you to think about it. Before I get going, I'd, I'd like you to get a piece of paper and uh, a pen. And I want you to keep track of something on this piece of paper that you have. So, before I get to what you're going to do with that piece of paper, we're going to talk about this question um, that, that I'd like to ask you. What has you worried? What has you worried? Right now, are you worried about possibly the fact that we're not meeting right now? It's, it's worrisome for, for all of us. I, kn I know that for sure. I, I'm actually supposed to be packing for Singapore right now. I should be on my way next week and, and heading on for two and two or three week trip. I've been worried about that. I've been worried about Tom and then he showed up here and made me laugh this morning. I have so much that I think I need to be worried about, but do I really need to be worried about those things? Now that's what I want to ask you. What is it that you are worried about the most right now? What is your biggest worry? Whether it be a health concern, a car payment, rent, whether or not you're going to eat tomorrow. What is your worry? What is your biggest worry? I want you to mull over that. Write that down on that piece of paper on the very top. Whatever that worry is. It doesn't have to be long. It can be one word, two words. I want you to think about it. And then I want you to write underneath it why you were worried about it. This last week, I could write on the top of my paper, finals. Why was I worried about it? Grades. I need good grades, right? I have to be worried about that. So that, that's my why. So I'll write that down. Once you have it, write it down and take time to think about it. And w truly, why are you worried about what it is that you wrote down? Now this morning, I'd like to go through Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 25 through 34. Now, of course, this is cliche to go to uh, the, the cure for anxiety, right? Well, I'll tell you, you can never exhaust a passage. There is so much meaning behind God's Word, especially the Sermon on the Mount. There is so much meaning behind everything that God says. So, yeah, it might be cliche, but it's definitely worth going through. In the first verse of this pericope, we have verse 25. For this reason I say to you, do not be anxious for your life. That's some heavy statement. That's a heavy statement right there. It's bold, right? It's a lot easier said than done, Jesus. How can I not be anxious for my life or about my life? That's bold. And then we keep reading. Or what you shall drink nor for your body as to what you shall put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? These are some heavy statements, really heavy. It's a lot easier, like I said, a lot easier said than done to just let go. But he says that we have to. Do not be anxious for your life. Why? Why can't we be anxious? Well, I'll tell you, it does no good for anybody. It hasn't done me any good. But this morning, throughout this text, I see three needs that our Father sustains. Our Father sustains every need that we need, or that we have. The first need we see our Father sustaining is food. Our Father sustains our food. In verse 26, look at the birds of the air that they do not sow, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? 
these birds, they have work to do, or no work to do. They, they have nothing to do but fly around and enjoy their life. They do no sowing nor reaping, yet God still sustains their needs. Don't you love to go camping? I love to go up to the cabin with Tom. It's, it's always a blast. We always enjoy ourselves. We get to spend time studying God's Word and enjoying the nature, enjoying the silence. But it's not always silent because there's birds. This morning, I was able to wake up and, and do some studying, and all I heard outside was rain and birds. The birds were chirping over the rain. That's how loud they were. But when we go camping, don't you love to wake up just to the sound of birds chirping? Isn't that the most calming sound to wake up to? You feel safe. Now, what happens if you weren't to hear the sounds of the birds? Say you wake up to dead silence, when normally, typically, you would wake up to the sound of the birds singing a beautiful song. Well, if they are not there, we know that something went wrong. God didn't sustain their needs, so they've died or left. They are trying to seek shelter, seek something to be able to be taken care of. But when we true, truly look at birds, they do nothing. Nothing. Of course, they go and they build their nests and they have their life cycle. But what good are they? I don't really see many benefits when it comes to a bird. Yet God sustains them. God takes care of them. These birds aren't worried about where they're going to get their next meal. They are free from all worry. But what does Jesus say? The question that he asks, Are you not worth much more than they? Are you not worth much more than they? I want you to take your pen and draw a line down underneath the reason that you are worried about this one thing that you've written up at the top. Draw a line and write down, are you not, or I am worth more than a bird. I am worth more than a bird. Because you are. You are worth more than a bird. You know why? Because Jesus says so. Now, we're going to look at one other reason or need that God sustains. Our Father sustains our clothing. Now in verse 28 and 29, and then into verse 30, we have talking about clothing. In verse 28, And why are you anxious about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory did not clothe himself like one of these. But if God so arrays the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more do so for you, O men of little faith? The lilies and the grass, what significance do they have? The grass, like Jesus says, is alive today, but tomorrow is burned up. Yet God clothes it. He could just leave it alone. Because, I mean, it's going to be burned up tomorrow anyway. I thought about this this morning. I, I wanted to go get a piece of grass and, and try to put a shirt on the piece of grass, but I figured that'd just be too outrageous. But when you think about it, it's pretty outrageous, right? To try and put a shirt on a blade of grass. But God clothes the grass. Ultimately, if we don't trust God will clothe us, we have a faith problem. If we don't trust God enough to clothe us, 
even though he clothes, like he says, the lilies and the grass, then where does our faith lie? Now, verse 31, Do not be anxious then, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we clothe ourselves? God knows our need before we even need it. God knows our every need in every moment. There is no question about this. God knows everything that we need, and He will take care of it, no matter what. Now, I want you to write on your piece of paper, down below, I am worth more than a bird. I want you to write, God knows all of my needs, because He does. And we'll move on to the last need that we have. Now, this one kind of seems a little different. Our Father sustains each day. What need is each day? Each day we need God. We need food. We need water. We need clothing. We have so many so-called needs. But God sustains every single one. And so that's what we're going to look at. But we're going to look at how this can actually apply to our worries. Why are we able to live each day? Why are we able to survive every day that we go through? Let's take a look at verse 27. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single cubit to his lifespan? Here, if you can tell me how you are adding days to your life by worrying, I would love to know because I'm a worrier. So if I can add days to my life by doing something that I'm good at, let me know. Otherwise, we have no reason to worry and it does no good for us to worry like that. And then let's go ahead and take a look at verses 32 through 34. For all these things the Gentiles eagerly seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The Gentiles... They sought after the physical needs in life. And aren't we the same way? What physical needs do you have that you seek after every day? What physical needs do you seek after? Money? Food? Clothes? Water? We seek after these things, right? Or have we become so desensitized to our lives that we forget that most of these things are typically taken care of? Of course, money more than others. I know a lot of people struggle with money. But most of the time, even if you struggle, God takes care of it, right? Think about everything that you have. If you have more than one pair of shoes, running water, <laughs> clean running water, think of if you've eaten out, eaten at a restaurant in the last month. You, you are rich. We are rich. I have running water at my house. I have a house. I have a roof over my head. Yet we're still seeking after certain things that we don't need. Part of the reason that sometimes we can't pay for rent is because we went out and bought a new couch. Maybe instead of going to work, you decided to take a day off just so you can enjoy the luxuries of your television at home. Then we worry about it. 
Whose fault is it for our worry? Our worry is our own fault. We cause that. And then we complain about how we just, we can't figure out what to do. Now, of course, there, there are certain worries, especially right now, that are caused by what's going on in the world. But the thing is, we can't be worried about those things. Now, I know several of us in this congregation were struggling trying to find a job because we had lost it. I know a brother that's taken a pay cut, and that has had a huge effect on his life. These are things that we have worries about. But is everything going to be okay? Absolutely. God is going to provide. God will sustain each day. How about if we have the ability to worship? Yeah, we, we can't meet together right now. And no, I, I truly don't think that it's persecution. I think that we need to keep each other safe. We need to watch out for the well-being of others. So we have this means. If you are gathered today with your family, you are deeply blessed. You are rich. And you have nothing to worry about. We will meet again. That is our goal is to come together. But most importantly, we look to God and God will take care of us. No question. But why will he take care of us? In verse 33, when he starts talking about or gives that contrast, the word but, in verse 32, the Gentiles eagerly seek for the material things. Even though the Heavenly Father knows what they need. We have in verse 33 that contrast, but. But, instead of seeking after these material things, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. That song, Seek Ye First, the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Isn't that our goal? To seek God first? If you are out and seeking nothing but food and money and clothing, but you're not taking time to study, then what are you seeking? You're seeking material comfort. You are not seeking the comfort that God will provide. Now back to your piece of paper. On the top, think about it. After reading through this text, is your worry a true worry? Should you be worried about it? Why shouldn't you be, or why should you be? Now, I'll tell you, there, there is a difference between a, a good, reasonable worry and a worry that's just a waste of time. I know, I'll, I'll give you an example. With me, my, my piece of paper, I would have written finals. And I was so worried about taking those tests that I was more focused on worrying than actually doing the tests. I was more focused on, am I ever going to get these done? Wait, <laughs> I'd spend so many hours worrying about getting them done, never actually touching them. No, that's procrastination. But I was so worried about getting them done, I didn't even touch them. How often do we do that? I'm so worried that I'm not going to be able to pay rent this month, but I'm going to take this day off. Because I need a personal day to worry about not being able to pay for rent. How ridiculous does that sound? 
And I'm not trying to call anybody out here because I am guilty of this very thing. But our Father sustains. Our Father sustains our food, our clothes, and our Father sustains us each day. During these times, we know that God is here watching over us, protecting us, and providing for us. Even in these times, we're separated. How often are you checking up on your brothers and sisters in Christ? My, my challenge to you today is to reach out to people that you are worried about. Because if you're just busy worrying about them and never reaching out to them, you're not doing anybody any good. You're not adding a day to your lifespan. After considering all of these things, I want you to take that piece of paper and I want you to tear the top where you wrote your worry. Keep the rest and remember that. But crumble that piece of paper up that you have your worry written on and throw it away. Because you don't need to worry about it. God will take care of it if you seek Him first. Seek His kingdom and seek His righteousness. All of these things will be added unto you. Verse 34 of chapter 6. Therefore, do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Pray. Pray. Look to God. Do not be anxious for tomorrow. Tomorrow will care for itself. Take it one step at a time. If you're overwhelmed or worried, one step at a time. Tomorrow will be here soon enough. You've got 24 hours to focus on today. Don't let that slip away from you. And don't worry so much that you allow yourself to fall short of the glory of God. Seek Him. Don't be anxious about tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Drayton, for that wonderful, uplifting sermon. We have a few announcements at this time. We know that everyone was concerned for the Dotties because they were suffering from the coronavirus, but they are doing better, so thank God for that. We uh, want to remind everyone, as always, about the single-serving communion emblems that you can have there here at the building. Uh, you can have somebody bring them to you if you call, or uh, you can come by and pick them up. We're looking to have a work day on June 6th. That's the first Saturday of June. If you can be part of that, please come. We want to praise the Lord for Armando of our Hispanic congregation who recently found employment. Uh, we also, of course, want to continue praying for Jose's family as they are still mourning the loss of Jose. We want to say a prayer for the uh, Bear Valley graduates. They've just graduated and uh, pray that God will be with them in their endeavors to preach the word. And we also want to thank God for Mark McDowell, who recently also got a new job. Those are all the announcements I have at this time. If you would, please join me in a word of prayer. Thank you for being with us here today, Father. Thank you that we could all share this together. And we pray, Father, that you will be with all of us through this trying time, that we can get through it and always rely on you and look to you for guidance and for peace. We thank you for Jesus Christ and his willingness to come here and to teach us love and to die for us as the ultimate indication of love, of your love for us. Pray that you go with us today and be with us throughout our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.